how has the journey been since you raised capital from Sequoia? How has it helped Hector Beverages in scaling up operations? Yeah. So I think uh, uh, primarily uh, since last year January, there are three, three areas where we expanded. Mm -hmm. So one was the range of products which were there in the market. When we raised money from Sequoia, uh, the only brand which we had at that point was Zynga. And uh, there were three variants. Mm -hmm. We moved into another category, and we've been thinking about this category for a longish time. We moved into traditional beverages category mm -hmm. with Paper Boat as our lead brand. Mm -hmm. That was the first utilization of money of launching a new brand, entering a new category. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, uh, which is happening, is uh, increasing our manufacturing capacity. We're setting up a plant in Mysore. And uh, so that work is going on. That plant is much larger in size than okay. the one which we are uh, sitting in right now. And uh, so that's the second play. Uh, and the third was to uh, get a, you know uh, to get our communication piece right, our marketing piece right, uh, which uh, is happening. Like you know, we are sp so we spend a lot of marketing money on. Uh, uh, digital and social media and all of that stuff. So we do not a mass media player, mm -hmm. but uh, so that has helped our expand our footprint in the marketing side mm -hmm. on on the uh, digital platform. Okay. Right. So how much investment has gone in these two plants? So this plant when we launched, this took us approximately couple of million dollars. Okay. This was those couple of million dollars. Mm -hmm. The rupee was mm -hmm. in a different state at that time. Okay. And uh, but I think uh, now this new plant would cost us around four, four, four and a half million dollars. The work is still going on. Okay. That is still not operational. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought the land earlier this year, okay. and the, the work construction and civil work is going on. That plant will be operational from March of 2015. Okay. Uh, like you just mentioned, you know, that when you started, it was, Zynga was a flagship brand and, you know, you have diversified into other brands. So going forward, will we see, you know, a very um, uniform distribution amongst all brands or will Zynga still remain to be the flagship of the company? So, so I don't think so, Zynga is a flagship brand of the company. I think, I think what you are saying is about different brands taking mm -hmm. their own importance. That's already happening. Paperboard is uh, Paperboard has done very well, and uh, it's not the last brand we are launching. We'll probably enter new brands and new categories in the beverages uh, going forward. And uh, uh, yeah, so so I I I can't say Zinger the flagship brand of the company now. I think uh, when we launched Paperboard, it was launched as a support brand. Mm -hmm. uh, to Zynga, but now the robot has created its own niche and it's, it's, it's a good enough category on its own. So, okay. so still Zynga contributes like what percentage to the revenues? The robot is slightly larger brand. And what do you attribute that? I think uh, the we, we chanced upon the category right. I okay. think the category is a much bro broader appeal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the brand is also define better than how what we were able to do for Zynga. Okay. And, uh, and and there is good product innovation which has happened. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, and, and we are also a better, uh, we understand the market better. Okay. You know, in the first time in Zynga, when we were launching Zynga, ended up making a lot of mistakes in first year, year and a half. Yeah. When we launched Paperboard, we did not uh, make those yeah. mistakes, we did not repeat those mistakes. So I think in the learning curve, we were higher. Mistakes uh, like what? Uh, mistakes like expanding too fast or expanding too slow. Okay. Going to the right set of outlets. Uh, like, uh, so I'll give an example of uh, when we launched Zynga, there was a time when we went to too many cities. Like, you know, there were cities where uh, it was very difficult for us to control the distribution. Mm -hmm. So we came back, you know, and said that these are the top cities which we, which we can handle it very well. And then we consolidate ourselves there. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of right kind of outlets, so we, we it, when we launched Zynga for the first time, because there was a lot of learning from Coke, like all like like couple of co-founders have worked in Coke before, and uh, so we went to every single outlet which you could find. Okay. But then we realize uh, later on that channel segmentation is important, mm -hmm. and we need to find out where the customer and the TG is actually going and buying their beverages. And we went ahead and collected target uh, group. Yeah. group. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So wherever uh, they are buying their products, mm -hmm. and go and do the segmentation of channels better than what we were doing at this time. Okay, okay. So what market have you realized for paper gold? 
What is your target group? Table board is uh, 25 to 35. Uh, male, female, uh, SSE A, A plus, staying in metros. So that is where that's what we are targeting. And okay. uh, so, so there are people who who have some uh, amount of memory for these drinks. Like these drinks were part of their growing up, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, but now no longer uh, available in the right. Uh, hygienic fashion mm -hmm. and uh, there is a natural affinity of this set towards the drinks which we offer. Okay. Yeah, so how would you position the pricing of you know Hector Beverages products at this point? Have you changed the pricing strategy to an extent? If so, why? So I wouldn't say that we have changed the pricing strategy. I think we have settled down uh, on uh, uh, in the early stage there was a lot of uh, you know moving around. Now we settle down. Uh, so, so look at our strategy. What we are trying to do, we are saying there are large players in this market, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the market is dominated by those large players. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot compete with them heads on. Like if we yes. launch a product mm -hmm. heads on, we do not have any sustainable advantage. So we are trying to find niche areas where they do not play. You know, these are smaller areas where there is uh, a, a smaller set of consumers mm -hmm. who want those products and the larger players don't want to. If you actually look at what Coke or PepsiCo would want, yeah. they would want the market to be having a similar, uh, you know, uh, 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 a similar amount of taste, you know, like because it will help serve the mass market matter. What we are trying to do is we are trying to fragment the market. We are trying to cut the market in smaller things. We are saying that, you know, okay, this set of consumer want this product and can we offer it to them? Yeah. And, and these are the small niches on the outer edges of the market which you want to play. Yeah. There, that's where the competition is not there and that's where we have the capability to uh, command some price premium. Okay. okay. So this is one of the strategies that how you know you are trying to get a place in this market. Mm -hmm. So but I'm sure within this space there must be competition. Are there other players? Any players in this? No. no. I think we choose our uh, niches very well. Mm -hmm. And we try to choose niches where we there is not a lot of competition, where we we can build uh, our own uh, uh, you know our own definitive uh, category building products. You know, so that's okay. that's what we are trying to do. And being you know a company that is in growth stage or you know higher growth stage, mid size at this point, what kind of challenges do you face in scaling up? when it comes to marketing and branding? Yes, yeah, so I think, I think uh, marketing and branding is important. And uh, so, so, uh, our, uh, so my personal take on this is that every organization has to understand where, which are the true capabilities of that organization. Mm -hmm. And some organizations are very good in certain set. And that's how they, so, so, so if you look at distribution, if you look at marketing, or if you look at product development, so every organization has some strength. Some of them are uh, stronger than others. And others are there to maintain, you know. So in our case, product development and innovation is at the core of our company, you know. So that's where we think our sustainable advantage lies. We can innovate better. We can get better products out at the right right cost point. Like in terms of our cost of experimentation is lesser than other people, and that's what we have intentionally built over last few years. Uh, so. So scaling up challenges and distribution, etc., would always be there. Like that's something which would always be there for a smaller company to grow, but, and that will happen with time. Like you move from one city to another, you don't try to uh, look at uh, India as one place. You try to look at India as you know there are you you cut it down into smaller places and try to win one at a time, and that's what we are trying to do. Uh, however, uh, the bigger focus is still on product innovation, getting new products and better products out there in the market. So, but you are in the testing phase of new products also. Yeah, we are uh, going to launch five new variants in Paperboard in September and October. And as we're speaking, uh, like one of them, uh, so one of them is going to be iced tea. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, we are experimenting today uh, on uh, you know few of those, and I think by the end of this month you will be able to see. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how many? You have seven variants right we now. We have seven variants in Paperboard. Okay. And we will five that. more in September and October. So total will be 12 variants by the end of October. There is a lot of capital also involved in this. So are you looking at another, you know, 
raising more capital from the markets? Not right now. Soon? Not right now. I think we'll wait last round, which is the money is still uh, okay. good with us. So you're deploying that. Yeah. Even. Maybe next year, uh, sometime we should be able to. We will be looking at raising another round, but it will be next year, later okay. next year, okay. sometime. Uh, not not right now. And when did as has the company break even? Or it's I'm sure you know with so much expansion going on, so it's you know priorities are different than yeah. breaking even. So yeah. What is no, but I think, I think operationally, uh, if you, uh, I think, I think we're just about there. I think we we'll just uh, there are uh, like I said. so on our annual basis we haven't, but there are some months when we operationally okay. do uh, break okay. even. Yeah. So are there any particular regions that you know you have a sales of paper board very high and regions you are looking at entering? Correct. So the markets which do extremely well for us are south, southern markets. Mm -hmm. So Bangalore uh, is uh, one amongst our leader, uh, ma leading markets and done extremely well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, north India is very good for us, specifically Delhi and CR. These are good okay. markets for us. Okay. Uh, the markets which are not doing so well for us are West, which is something which you know, it's a distribution game, so we have to go and spread our distribution. Our distribution is not very good in uh, Bombay and okay. Pune, so we need we need to Mumbai and Pune, which we need to improve. And uh, and uh, another market which is very good for us is Northeast. Uh, Northeast and Goa both are very good markets for Zynga. Okay. And the company okay. to do well there. For Zynga. Yeah. And for paperboard. For paperboard, I think Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore is basically. Yeah, correct. Yes, that's correct. So, you know, going forward for the next 12 to 18 months, what kind of expansion plans do you have for Hector Beverages? Yeah, so we are looking at a new manufacturing location in Mysore. That will, that was, we are very excited about that. That will come into play by 1st of March next year. Okay. And then we will uh, uh, look at, uh, you know, expanding the business growth. Uh, like, you know, once we have that capacity, then expand the geographies where we sell mm -hmm. to more. Like right now, as we are there in top six or eight cities, we'll try to probably expand it to maybe 50. And in those top six to eight cities, if we are covering X number of outlets, we'll try mm -hmm. to take it to 3X or 4X. And uh, I think that's that will be the focus for the next few, uh, 12 to 18 months. Okay. So has the four and a half million already gone into that Mysore plant or is it the total expenditure that you... This is a total expenditure we expect that plant to have. Like okay. when, when it starts up, okay. it becomes the final uh, situation. But are you getting revenues from international market also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The international markets contribute around 15% to our business. And this has been increasing, like? This has been increasing. That, you know, we started it uh, only uh, eight months back, and this is a uh, very good, uh, like it has oh, okay. done very well for us. Correct. So you think of an Indian staying in, uh, say, West Coast and yeah, gets yeah. the authentic drink. Yes, US, yeah. UK, Canada, UAE, Australia. I think I think Indians are, uh, there must be, there, there would be some here and there like Singapore and a uh, couple of yeah. markets. But I think Indians are uh, broadly clustered in these five or six markets. Uh, okay. And uh, and we are present there. 